Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Becoming Eva fans, and welcome to our season finale of Becoming Eva. Today, we are doing a sneak peek into my newest book, <laughs> Secrets of the Sexy and Shameless. Yes, so come with the are gonna get this scoop today on my new book awesome awesome i love that hard copy that's what's up so i'm really excited about this let's well i guess before we dive in how's your week been how are you doing what's going on this week? <laughs> my week has been a uh, pretty busy pretty hectic um with preparing for the book release the normal day-to-day every day with the kids and work and it's just been a lot, but I'm excited to like finally be here a little bit nervous too, uh, <laughs> but I am excited. That's okay. A good, a little bit of anxiety is to be expected. That's normal. And that keeps us dependent on God. You know, he's got you. So, but yeah, so excited that this day has finally come. I know we've been talking about, um, you know, dedicating an episode of Becoming Eva to this book uh gosh since since the launch of, of becoming eva so super excited that this day is here and i'm so glad that our becoming eva family gets the first sneak peek of this incredible amazing amazing book so yeah really excited for you thank you i'm super excited how's your week been it's been busy man it has been full but productive i'm grateful you know i was able to um, step away in and take a class that I've been trying to take literally for over a year. Um, I was able to take that on Thursday and Friday. And I just love consuming new information, taking in, um, you know, just new information. And so really excited and um, glad I got some time to do that. And it's going to be a, a full weekend, but I'm excited about the weekend. And just for me, I think I'm looking forward to kind of taking some time during the holidays because it's been full these last couple of, of months and particularly last couple of weeks leading up to today have been really full. So I'm already looking forward to Netflixing and chilling, curling up with some Lifetime, all of that, all of that. I'm here Yes, for it. <laughs> it's time, it is time. I'm ready for Thanksgiving break. Yes. I'm even ready for Christmas break. Oh, nope. I'm just ready. <laughs> facts, facts on facts, so all right. So are we ready to dive into the promo for yes. the lovely Secrets of the Sexy? All yes. right, hold on a second. I actually think I closed it out too, but no, I have it up here. Okay, I'm about to open it up now, y'all. So stay tuned. You will get first dibs, all right? On momento. Here we go. Here we go. Hey family, I'm here to tell you about my new book, Secrets of the Sexy and Shameless. In my new book, you will learn how to address those awkward conversations with your children. This is especially important to me because I'm raising three beautiful girls in an overly sexualized world. As a parent, we wanna keep our children in a bubble and maintain their innocence as long as possible. But as you know, they have to one day grow up and live in this world. I want to provide some practical tools in which we can train and teach our children to be pure and share pragmatic methods to maintain that purity in this overly sexualized world. I know if we are waiting to talk to our kids about sex in middle school, we are too late. Even grade school is sometimes too late. In this book, Secrets of the Sexy and Shameless, I discuss when you should talk to your children about dating and about sex. I also provide you with some practical tips and tools that have worked for others. If you are a virgin and you are getting ready to get married, you will get advice on the marriage bed and learn what the marriage bed undefiled actually means and how to have shameless sex in the bedroom with your spouse. 
If you are already married, then you will get tips on how to remain desirable after marriage. We are also going to discuss gender norms and double standards as it relates to purity and how culture influences the roles of male and female expectations. We are going to dive into overcoming sexual abuse and finding freedom in the marriage bed. I've gathered some bedroom tips from couples that have been married from a span of one year to 40 years so that we can ensure that we are always striving to keep it spicy in the bedroom. Buckle up your seatbelts as we dive into secrets of the sexy and shameless. See you soon. <laughs> it's, wow. always, it's always funny like to hear your, your self talk, like mm -hmm. to hear your voice. I'm like, oh, I sound kind of funny. <laughs> No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I was really excited to see this. Like, awesome, awesome. So I feel like before we talk about, I like to call it SSS, but Secrets of the Sexy and, and Shameless, let's talk a little bit about your journey as an author. So this is not your first book. You know, um, you are an established author by now, um, which is amazing. So if you want to talk to us a little bit about your first book and then what led you to write Secrets of the Sexing and Shameless, that would be great. So my first book was titled The One Who Restores. And so that book began as kind of a way for me to deal with the grief of losing my ex in a car accident. Mm -hmm. And then the drama that unfolded at the end of our relationship um, you know, I, I mentioned it on Becoming Eva before with um, the really bad breakup and him putting his hands on me. And then a month later, he was killed in a car accident. And a week before that, I had a dream, like God had given me a dream. And in the dream, there was this large hand holding my hand and we were going up this mountain and then we started to run down the mountain and this large hand was holding my hand and when I woke up I could still feel like a hand holding my hand and so I told my mom about it and she said that God was getting ready to take me on a journey and he would be holding my hand throughout the journey and then a week later is when he was tragically killed in a car accident but uh, before he was killed in a car accident, he called me and we talked and he asked me to forgive him. And of course I forgave him. And I said, you know, we couldn't be boyfriend and girlfriend anymore, but you know, we can work on being friends. Um, and so when you date someone for four years, you are still like connected and close to them and you, you've grown close to their family. So it was still very hard to deal with the grief of losing him even though we were broken up at the time it was a very recent breakup so I was dealing with a lot of emotions and being here in Atlanta without any you know family members uh, living in a two-story house by myself it was very lonely um, it was just a very rough time for me and so I was trying to preoccupied my mind with other things. So I started to write, I started journaling and <laughs> it turned out to be a book because I journaled um, all the way up until I met Ryan. And in that book, it's a big portion about how God speaks to us individually and uniquely and how he can restore us. Because with Ryan, everything was completely different. The relationship happened quickly because I was like, God, I don't want to date someone for another four years and with uh, withholding sex and not having sex. Like that's a long time. It is. And so <laughs> with Ryan, everything was very, very fast. Um, it was prophesied to me that I was getting ready to meet my husband. And when I meet him, everything's going to happen very fast. Wow. And so that was prophesied to me 
I believe it was like an August month. And then I met Ryan the next year, like January. And seven days after we met, he asked me to be his first girlfriend <laughs> in like 13 years. I think he said he hadn't had like a serious girlfriend, like with a title in 13 years. Of course he was dating, you know, girls or whatever, but <laughs> yeah. he didn't have any <laughs> officials <laughs> in 13 years. So seven days later, he asked me to officially be his girlfriend. All right. Four months later, he asked me to marry him. And then six months later, we got married. So all of that happened within this time span of meeting and getting engaged, getting married within within a year. Yeah. And Ryan was so understanding mm -hmm. of like my grieving process and he was very supportive. Um, I believe he knew my ex um, because we all went to the same church. Mm -hmm. So he was very understanding of everything and super supportive. And so I just wrote about, you know, that, that journey of my life from going from grief, kind of being depressed. Cause I was like, I'm tired of, of like being good and, you know, things happening to me and God, why is this happening to me? I had a lot of questions for God. And I was like, why did you let me date him for four years? If you knew it was going to end like this. So mm -hmm. it was a lot of emotions that, God was dealing with me. Absolutely. And I think I got really close to God during that time. And I was really discovering the ways in which he was speaking to me throughout the relationship. And uh, during, during the time I was asking if he was my husband and he was like, I was giving you red flags and like, <laughs> You just wasn't, you weren't picking it up. And so after, you know, I had time to reflect and I was like, well, I guess you were actually speaking to me and answering me. Um, I just was not getting it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but thank God for his faithfulness, you know? Yes. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you going to so, say? So that was the gist of the first book. Mm -hmm. Now, the second book, completely different topic. <laughs> different theme I know people I know people are looking at this topic and they're like what Girl, what I'm is, here for it Come what on. is she talking about Let's go. <laughs> I know some of my family members were like I don't want to know what you and Ryan be doing in the bedroom I was like it's not even like that it's not like that <laughs> yeah I'm not here for that but go <laughs> <laughs> like, it is not like that I was like watch the promo video <laughs> It's not like <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's been a little nerve-wracking even putting it out there. Um, because I think it's in a, an important topic, number one. It's very and how I started to write this book. I was on a panel at my church for love and marriage, and a lot of the women, once they opened up the floor for questions at the end a lot of the women had questions and I'm talking about young women, old women had tons of questions about the marriage bed and sex and sexual positions. And what's, what are the limitations in the bedroom? And I think I was freshly married. I was kind of like a newlywed. Uh -huh. so, you know, I was like, don't pass the mic to me. Y'all, y'all get answered. <laughs> y'all get answered, not me. And so <laughs> the host, had invited um, some seasoned saints to come up to the mic and give their opinions. And their opinions were like crazy. So I was like, what in the world? And I'll, and I'll go into more at the book release about the specifics. This is just a little sneak peek of what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, <laughs> but I said, there is a need in the Christian community to talk about this because these women were all over the place with their questions, with their responses. I was like, oh my goodness, I need to know for myself. Yeah. So that's why I started investigating into this topic, researching it into the scriptures, asking the other people about their opinions. I was like, is it a generational thing? Is it younger 
a younger generation have different views than the older generation like and where does it come from yeah. so i did a lot of research um into this topic i think this i had a lot more fun writing this book than the first book um so that's kind of like my transition from the one who restores to secrets of the sexy and shameless hey man that's what's up well i'm so glad i'm so glad you saw the need because there really is a need you know not well first and foremost i feel like there's a need in the body of christ regarding this subject and being um educated on it and free enough to talk about it because number one god is the one who created sex so why is the world the one that's defining it, you know? And so all that to say, there's definitely a need there. But then even as it relates to the world, I feel like the world needs to know how God originally designed it. And within the confines of how it was originally designed, I believe he needs to see, the world needs to see healthy examples of, you know, marriages, um, you know, how to talk to your children about it, um, sexuality, period, you know? Um, and of course there are a lot of different, you know, conversations on how far is too far, what's too much and all that stuff. That's for another conversation. But at the end of the day, the world needs to know that there's nothing wrong with sex once it's in the proper confines of marriage. And once it is in the confines of marriage, that there is freedom in it, you know, that it's a beautiful thing that God designed for us to enjoy as man and wife. So I'm so right. glad, you so glad you were obedient and took this journey. Um, and then I also wanna commend your church because the fact that they had a forum and the fact that the parishioners and the people that attended the event were uh, felt comfortable enough to ask those questions and have those types of conversations I think was a good start, even though it probably sounded crazy and there was a lot of stuff going on. It, you know, it, it seemed like it was a safe enough environment for people to at least start the conversation, um, which I can't always say is the case when it comes to churches. So kudos for real for there being yeah. a forum for that type of conversation. So you talked a lot about research for this book. Can you tell us a little bit about what type of research you did to do in preparation for writing this book? So first, I started with one-on-one -on -one interviews. So that was a little awkward. I felt like people weren't being like their true self. Like some of their answers were a little sugar-coated. I mean, okay, it's a little awkward when you have two eyeballs staring at you saying like, what do you do in the marriage bed? Can you give me some tips? Like, what are your thoughts on purity and virginity? And do you watch porn? Have you ever watched porn? Like <laughs> those types of questions. It's a tad bit awkward to do with two eyeballs staring at you. So that was my first approach. I still, you know, got those interviewees and got their responses. But then I said, okay, well, why don't I try the phone interviews? Because at least I'm not staring at them when I'm asking these questions. And so, you know, I think the answer started getting a little bit more truer. And finally, I did Google Forms, which proved to be the most efficient and I think people were more comfortable to share their true feelings and true answers I got some really good responses <laughs> from the google forms for sure <laughs> and then of course researching in the scriptures about what the bible says about it amen very very good so I mean if, especially our becoming evil family you all know this woman right here has a lot going on. I mean, a lot, you know, wife, mother of three, one on the way, works full time, like a lot on top of the, well, I should say not on top of, and then on top of that is becoming Eva and, you know, all these other things. So uh, how in the world did you find time to write a book? Another <laughs> one. <laughs> so I've been writing this book for a while. So it, it took me a while to actually finish this book with all the research I gathered and then all my personal research as well. So that process took a, a long time. And then with having kids, uh, at the time, Ryla was already born. So 
it was just like a three family household when I started writing this book. And since then, of course, we have two more. <laughs> so oh, I'll say this once that, you know, they were born, I kind of had to take a break because, you know, nursing and you're like around the clock, 24 seven cafeteria for your little babies. So <laughs> I had to take little breaks in between time, but once, you know, they were a little bit more independent, I could get back into writing it. And so I would do a little bit at a time. Okay, let me, let me get another interview today. And then finally, just after doing a little bit and a little bit, then I was like pretty much done. And I was like putting it together and doing my own research and then I think I've been finished with this book maybe for maybe a year or so, but you know, the planning of like the book release and with COVID because originally the book release was scheduled for this past summer and it was supposed to be an in-person book release, but you know, with me having another baby on the way, I'm like, well, I need to go ahead and like knock it out. <laughs> And then, so of course, you've been helping me plan this virtual book release that we're going to do tonight. So at least I can put the book out there and, and I pray that it will get into the hands that, that God wants to read the book. So that is my prayer. Uh, I've been obedient. It's done. It's out there. So it is what it is. <laughs> amen. Amen and amen. So you touched on this a little bit, but what would you say was the most challenging part about this book, writing this book? I would say the finishing part for me was probably the most challenging part. Um, I started doubting myself and saying, oh man, like, what are people going to say? What are people going to think? Um, designing the book cover, like I, I painted this and I had other paintings and so just like determining what the book cover should look like the the planning of the book re release was challenging too um I just think even like just thinking about like how people are gonna judge me <laughs> like what kind of book did Latoya write like all of that I think was challenging or is challenging for me is the finishing uh aspect of the book <laughs> gotcha well kudos for finishing because i mean a lot of things you said i think are challenging for people number one being consistent i think a lot of us have great ideas and dreams and goals and things that we know god has called us to and we may um you know either procrastinate in getting started or once we do get started we may start and then stop and then start and then stop but you were consistent in the midst of, you know, having children and having all these other um, demands put on you over the period of writing this book, you still came back to it and said, okay, well, let me write a little bit more and let me write a little bit more. And then even in the midst of COVID happening, you still deciding, okay, I need to still move forward and release what God has given me, you know? So I'm grateful for your obedience because it has definitely been an incredible example for me. So what advice would you give for people that are writing their own books or want to write their own books? Like what advice would you give? I would say just do a little bit each day. Um, I know we all have busy schedules with work and families and obligations, but even if it's just a sentence, even if it's just a paragraph coming up with a title for a chapter, just do a little bit each day and then you'll be amazed over time, like how much you have completed. So that would be my advice. Just do a little bit each day. Very good. And then also, this is another opportunity for you to plug, but are there any tips for um, people that you would recommend if it's for publishing or printing, having things um, put together, all of that? Because people are always trying to figure out what software to use, how to get their stuff out there. What would you recommend? You can, you can go to Kashan Books. Um, I also do the publishing as well. Well, self-published. Um, so you can go to my website at K-A-S-H-O-N-B-O-O-K-S.com, Kashan Books. I know that's a not a name that you hear, but that's my middle name. Um, and so there's a tab 
if you're interested in getting something published that um, you would fill out the fields and of course it will shoot me an email and then I'll contact you and we can go over like pricing and what are some things that you want done because with my connections with um, JDOT of course I work closely with JDOT with um, explain what JDOT is JDOT well you could you you could do it but I was just gonna say a lot of people know it as track stars so can you explain the relationship between JDOT and track stars you know what I mean so JDOT is like the overall um I guess like the multimedia company that track stars is underneath they have track stars brand nectar they they have um music distribution the uh -huh. distribution, tons of things under the JDOT umbrella. And so Sean Grant, he mostly does like the website designs. He does photography, book covers. Um, he did my, well, I gave him my painting and he did my book cover uh, front and back. He did my photography as well. Um, so he did my website too. He, they do a lot of stuff. Um, Sean is super talented. Uh, so I would connect them or if you, if you're interested, I would connect you with JDOT and we would go over pricing from there. And that's essentially it. <laughs> awesome. So there you guys go. You have another resource. If you're working to write a book, you're planning to write a book, you're on the brink of publishing a book and you're trying to figure out what route to go because Sean Books is definitely an option. Good stuff. All right, so let's get into the actual content of the book. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about some of the themes that people will come across as they're reading the book. So the first theme is all about let's talk about sex. And I mostly focus on number one, I was not, I did, I grew up in a Christian household and my parents did not have like a real conversation about sex. They only said, my mom only said when I had a boyfriend, well, you know what the Bible says about it. Yeah, I know what the speed limit is outside, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to drive the speed limit. Yeah, I know what the Bible says about <laughs> sex. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that was the extent of our sex conversation. So I wonder how many other Christian households that were like mine, like that did not have like a practical conversation of why you should abstain from sex until marriage, like didn't have any of those types of conversations. Like how do you set boundaries? Can, can we talk with your children about how to set boundaries? So I was able to find people that had real practical uh, conversations, real conversations with their parents in a Christian household. So I use examples um, and I gather different tips and strategies that work for them um, because I know it can be an awkward conversation, but it's a, it's a need because we live in a overly sexualized world and someday your children are going to have to leave out of your home. You can't, you cannot cover them from everything and shield them from the dangers of this world. Like they're going to have to one day make that choice to either have sex or not have sex till marriage. Like you have to give them enough wisdom and understanding for them to make an informed decision about whether to do it or not. Yeah. So that's the first part of the book. I talk about how do you talk to your children about sex? That's good. Let me, let me comment on that before we get into the next part of the book. Uh, first of all, that's super good. That's super important. I think oftentimes particularly Christians. Um, and honestly, I feel like the older I get, the more I kind of see this as a common theme in the church. If it's awkward, if it's uncomfortable, if it's challenging to talk about or to address, we usually don't, which is not always good. Um, and I'll say in most cases, it's not good because it basically uh, leaves it wide, wide open for people to interpret however they want to interpret it without it being reinforced by the, or backed by the word of God. And so 
the fact that you actually walk parents through how to have these types of conversations with their children, I think is great because it kind of gives them a blueprint. It lets them know that it's important, A, but then B, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Like here are some practical steps on how you can start having these conversations with your children because guess what? If you don't, somebody else will and they probably won't have God in mind when they're talking to your children about it, you know? I know for me, I was fortunate enough. Um, I actually, funny story, I was seven years old. I kissed a boy and my stomach started hurting like the next day. <laughs> and I was like, mom, I think I'm pregnant. And my mom looks at me like, what? <laughs> I was like, I think I'm pregnant. You know? <laughs> And she's like, uh, what are you talking about? And I'm like, well, yesterday I kissed a boy and today my stomach hurts. So I think I'm pregnant. And she was like, that's not quite how it works. You know, we'll talk about you kissing a boy in a minute, but let's break down this whole birds and bees piece. And she um, invested in a book for children that really talked to you through the biological aspect of having children, you know, um, how boys and girls are made differently, how, you know, when you become an adult and you're married, men and women come together to create new life, you know, what does that look like with the sperm and the egg? So like literally we had this book that she kind of walked me through. And I was, like I said, I was seven years old when I came to her. I think I was probably eight when we started going through the book. And so I was fairly young, but I'm so, so grateful that she was the one who walked me through it. And it wasn't, you know, me seeing something crazy on television or hearing something crazy at school, you know? And so um, it, it really, I really appreciated her being intentional about teaching me and not just kind of, you know, saying, oh girl, you ain't pregnant and just keep it moving. You know what I mean? So all that to say, um, there are resources out there and I'm glad that you share what some of those resources are. So, all right, let's get into the next theme that people will uh, read about in your book. Purity versus virginity. Like what's mm. the difference between the two? Is one better than the other? Yes. Let's talk about um, why people remain virgins until marriage, like the yes. benefits of doing that. And then I talk about if you are not a virgin and how being celibate can make you whole again. Amen. I talk about porn and how porn is problematic and it, how it can uh, affect your mental health. So we discuss if married people should watch porn. Uh, <laughs> there's varying opinions on that porn and marriage. Um, and then finding freedom in the marriage bed after experiencing sexual abuse. I thought it was important to include that part in my book when you're talking about the marriage bed, because mm -hmm. um, in the world that we live in with this rape culture and, you know, Harvey Weinstein's out there in the world and, you know, you got to talk about how victims can overcome sexual abuse and still have freedom in the marriage bed so I found some brave um, people to give their testimonies on how their experience with sexual abuse either as a child or even through adulthood because it it happens even to us as adults um, and mm, I would say nine times out of ten it's happened to most people in some form or fashion yeah so it's important to really uh dive into how to deal with that sexual abuse and how to overcome it so that when you do get married how you can have freedom in the marriage bed yeah i talk about cultural Hold on a second. okay i'm like i need to break this up these are some good things <laughs> let me go back because you talked about two other ones i want to comment on so the first one purity versus virginity is huge so I'm so glad you talk about that because especially people in the church or Christians, I feel like in some cases we doing everything, but which when, when I say everything, but I mean, we doing everything, but have sex. 
and we think, oh, I'm good. I'm still a virgin. And God is looking like, are you? Are you really? Like, <laughs> you're missing the point. You're missing the point, you know? And even taking it a step further where, okay, you may not be kissing or, or um, fondling or um, having sex outside of marriage, but what are you taking in? You know, like, this is your temple. And not even what are you taking in media wise, what are you putting in your body? Like all of that, how are you treating your body? All of that is so important. So I'm so glad that that is a theme in your book. And then I just want to piggyback a little bit. I know girl, I, I'm, I'm like, sorry. I'm thinking of the term somebody, one of my interviewees used a dirty virgin. <laughs> you just made me think of uh, that term dirty virgin. Like, yeah doing other things but not the actual absolutely yes a dirty virgin a slutty virgin whatever you want a not a not pleasing to god virgin a (laughs) sinful virgin i mean we could go in we could go in because i'm just saying i i I, that's a part of my story i know that well and it's like oh god like really teaching the importance of purity over virginity, you know, and in some cases, you know, you do, you have, um, or I want to say even some, in a lot of cases, you have people that have um, lost their virginity, but they've declared to God, they've repented and they've declared to God, like, hey, I want to enter marriage pure. And, you know, from that moment forward, they've taken steps that they need to do to be pure on their wedding day, whether they were, are physically a virgin or not. So, you kind of, you know, you, you have both aspects, which is so, so important. So, yeah. Yes. The other thing I want to talk on before you touch on the next one was freedom in the bedroom. I know you talked about freedom from abuse, which is huge. That's super important because you have uh, women and men that have experienced abuse and have difficulty finding freedom in marriage once they've come out of something like that. So I think that's very, very important. But then on the flip side of that, I want to talk about how it's important to have freedom, you know, at, even if, you know, if you're a virgin coming into marriage, you know, especially if you didn't talk about sex, you didn't know nothing about sex, you just knew don't have it. And you're like, well, I done made it this far, you know, how does this thing work, you know? Right. And there's a lot to unpack there. And so really finding freedom on both ends because you're on a journey now with another person, a very intimate journey. And, you know, how, how do you, how does that look, you know, as far as finding that freedom with your spouse, but then also, you know, being pleasing to God. So I just wanted to touch on those two things because I know you mentioned them in your book. They're super important and anyone else that may be you know, experiencing things like that, having questions like that or conversations like that or thoughts like that, like this is a great book for you to read. So carry on, next theme. (laughs) So the next theme in my book, I talk about cultural influences and gender roles from pop culture and how it's influenced society. So what TV shows, movies, music, all those different things, how they have shaped our views on sex. And then I talk about through the different generations, like Mm. I go back decades and I analyze different TV shows and movies and music that was, you know, that was being played on the TV and how it kind of shaped the society and our, our views. So that, that chapter is pretty interesting too. And then in my final chapter, it, I talk about how to keep it spicy. I have a little, um, I, had a, I have a little insert in the book and it says for married eyes only. So, you know, use your wisdom when you get to that last chapter. Um, and, you know, if you're struggling with lust, um, then I wouldn't recommend reading that last chapter. Uh, <laughs> Not yet. Uh, If you're getting ready to get married or if you're married, then it's fine. You know, use your wisdom on that last chapter. But uh, I talk about how to keep it spicy in the bedroom. Uh, I dive into the purpose of sex. And like I said, when I sent out those Google forms, people were very transparent and very honest. You know, even though the the surveys were anonymous, like I kind of knew who I was sending them to. 
So I was like, man, I got some freaky friends and freaky family members. Oh my gosh. Meaning those responses. Look, the marriage bed is undefiled, girl. Undefiled. When you got that I, ring, bring the freak out. Yes. I was like, some people are on some other levels. <laughs> I'm not there yet. But I put it all in the book. I was like, you know, hey, it's there. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, that, that chapter was fun writing. And so that was pretty much the gist of what you'll find in my book. Excellent. Excellent. So let me ask you, like, who would you say this book is written for? Like, who would you say is like your target demographic for this book? Well, I interviewed both men and women. So this book is for both men and women it's not just for women it's definitely for men as well because um there's chapters in there about uh chapters for virgins and for celibate people like questions that you may have about the marriage bed and a lot of people had some you know some legitimate questions that they that they had um about you know what's what to expect (laughs) and like you know I was like okay yeah you are a virgin like reading your question like yeah you definitely a virgin (laughs) but you know I think it's for both men and women um I interviewed both so there's a lot of good stuff in there of course I I'm marketing this for adults um teenagers you know use your wisdom on that parents um I don't you know Uh, you can read it and use the advice that I've given you to kind of help you with your conversations with them but I wouldn't just hand them the book and say here you go read it (laughs) (laughs) here's your Christmas present there you go (laughs) but I, I would say adult men and women very good very very good awesome stuff okay so last but not least where can listeners get the book on my website <laughs> to seanbooks.com and that's k-a-s-h-o-n books.com thank you now can they get um is it just a hard copy can they do audio is it just like what is the best way to get it it's it's a hard it's just a hard copy right now awesome. um i'll probably work on getting it um converted also in an electronic format as well because I know a lot of people do audiobooks um but you know if you're not you know ready for this type of book I still have my first book on my website the one who restores a little more conservative you know if you're not ready for this oh my god (laughs) if it's too hot for you yeah if you're if you're not ready you can get the other book it's you know a little bit more conservative and you know (laughs) <laughs> gotcha gotcha thank you so much toya is there anything else you want to share about this book before we transition into noble character come to the book release you'll get all the juicy details at yes the book yes do you want to share details on the book release now or do you want to yes, wait yes sure okay, it's, it's tonight log in at seven fifty five facebook live and be ready to participate So it will be interactive with the audience. So hopefully um, if you decide to join us, be ready to participate. It'll be fun and entertaining and exciting. Yes. Now, for those of you that are listening live, we're talking about Saturday, November the 14th, 2020. It will be 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, We'll be going Facebook live. And then afterward, you'll actually be able to, to get a recording of it or hear the recording of it on our podcast, right? Yes, we will post, we'll it, post the podcast. it. Yeah, and we'll also post it on our on our um, website, on our Facebook page, um, on our YouTube channel. So, yes, but you do not want to miss it tonight, fresh, so you can get all the details. Go order, go order, go order. Yeah, so we have spoken word artists tonight: Miles Austin and Nicole Wilson. So those are some really talented artists. So you want to come and enjoy some spoken word too. Awesome. So let's get into our noble character acknowledgements. Do you have a noble character acknowledgement for this week? I do. Okay. Since I'm talking about secrets of the sex scene, shameless, I I did want to acknowledge 
um, number one, thank God for his boldness Amen. that he has given me because I am definitely an introvert person, but God be having me doing some extrovert things like all the time. I'm like, <laughs> really? You want me to do what? I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I, I want to thank God for that fearless personality that is somewhere down on the inside that comes out, you know, when called upon. Um, I want to thank Ryan for his support throughout this journey. Uh, Ryan was so funny when I told him that I was working on this book. And he was like, really? Um are you sure you want to do that topic? <laughs> like, what do you think my mom and sister are going to say? I'm like, well, um, well, they have kids, you know, so I, I think they know what sex is. Um, <laughs> so he was really funny uh, initially. And he was like, well, I got to read it first. I got to approve it first before you just put it out there. So he was the first person to actually read my book and even give me some edits on the book. So I want to thank him for his support. Um, and I want to thank you, Maya, because you were also my editor of my, my official editor of this book. So thank you for doing that. I know it was very time consuming. I want to thank Sean Grant. Um, from JDOT LLC for my website design, um, designing my book cover and the photography. I know I've been driving him crazy because I'm a slightly a perfectionist. Like, um, could you change that? Could you, you know, change that around? You know, driving him crazy. So I want to thank Sean uh, for being patient with me. And I want to thank the focus group. I had a focus group. Um, I don't remember when it was, it was pre COVID of course. Mm -hmm. And we were just trying to make final decisions on book cover designs and titles and, um, you know, titles of chapters. So I want to thank the focus group for coming out and spending time, um, to really dive into, um, the book with me. I want to thank my interviewees because it would not have been possible without you guys so thank you for being shameless and sharing your secrets Amen. and your wisdom your questions your tips and strategies so thank thank you all that's who i want to acknowledge for my noble character today my that's noble awesome. character today that's awesome and this week my noble character is you miss latoya kashan moore like seriously you have modeled out this journey um, from being obedient to God and doing things that aren't necessarily comfortable, talking about things that aren't necessarily comfortable, you know, just for the sake of, of edifying the body of Christ and providing a positive example, you know, for the church as well as the world at large when it comes to um, sex, having shameless sex, being pure, you know, and um, overcoming um, obstacles in this world from, you know, abuse to, um, you know, just the crazy stuff that media filters to us. Like you've given us a blueprint on how to overcome all of that. And so really, really, really grateful for you for being consistent and taking these steps, you know, step after step, you know, even if you have to pause and catch your breath for a minute, you were steadfast and continuing to move forward and taking steps. And I'm so honored to have witnessed this journey. So really excited for you. Grateful to have you in my life and cannot wait to see all that God does in and through you, not just regarding this book, but just regarding your faithfulness and your obedience to Christ, period. So we honor you today, Miss Kashan Moore. Latoya Kashan Moore, excuse me, I had Kashan books in my head. So <laughs> Latoya Kashan Moore, we honor you today. Thank you, Maya. That was a surprise. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. I had to get you. I had to get you. <laughs> Good stuff. So, all right. So we have a BE challenge for this week. Do you want to share? Do you want me to? You can share. Okay, so last week's BE challenge was to identify and take a step toward building trust and or intimacy in a relationship. 
This week's BE challenge is to reflect on one of the topics or themes this season that we talked about. We covered a lot. I cannot believe, wow, we're at episode 12, but just reflecting on one of those topics that we discussed this season and create action steps towards evolving into the woman of God or man of God that God has called you to be. That's why we call this podcast Becoming Eva, because we know that we are all evolving. We are all growing. And for those of you that don't know, Eva represents the restored Eve. We know Eve made a lot of mistakes in the garden. She was the one who, you know, bit the fruit, gave it to her husband and, you know, led to the reason that we, you know, struggle with childbirth and working the, work the land and all of that today. But God, thank God through Jesus Christ has restored humanity. And we look at the restored Eve very much as being a picture of the Proverbs 31 woman who, you know, is faithful to her spouse and her children. She is, you know, taking care of her home, but she's also out there making deals and buying fields and making sure that her family is presented and clothed in the best. And she has dignity and she's able to, you know, stand upright. She spends time with the Lord, you know, all those fabulous things where we're like, how the world does somebody have time to do that like that is the restored eve and that is who we have chosen to rename eva because she's the evolution of eve and so we're so grateful um, for each and every one of our listeners this um this season season one and season two and we just encourage you to keep evolving keep growing keep becoming eva yes so uh, you, you guys know that I am expecting our first baby boy. So we're going to take a little break from Becoming Eva, but we'll be back and we'll see you next season. Um, be on the lookout for our summer book club, which will probably be Secrets of the Sexy and Shameless. So if you want to participate in our book club this summer, be on the lookout. Make sure you join or like our page for more information. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast app. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook at Becoming Eva Today. That's one word. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Becoming Eva Today. See you guys next Eva. season. <laughs>